uh, we came to the closure, temporal closure of Simnex today. Um, after allowing them to operate, close to two years. As you know, every country has rules and regulation, processes and procedures to establish a business. Simlex being a component of the companies that is operating in the Gambia. When they started operating barely two years ago, we allowed them to operate based on the information that they gave us, that they will be working on having a tax exemption, we refer to it as SIC, Special Investment Certificate. And based on that information, we allowed them to operate for a six-month period, and we didn't see the certificate, and they were not forthcoming. We still do an extension up to one year. After an, one year, we reminded them to come and fulfill their tax obligation, as they are supposed to do their filing on a quarterly basis. However, because of that extent, uh, expectation of the SIC, we did not see them. And then after the extension of one year, we reminded them again. Since still you are working on the SIC, you did not get it. Why can't you assess yourself, do your filing for the operation you've been doing for the past one year? Which they've agreed and did. They have filed. They made a file on their corporate tax obligations. We have that with us. Now we are saying that since we have got this amount from you, which you assess yourself, come forward and do the payment. They still request for another extension, which we, we are kind enough to we allow them. After that three months again, they come back for another extension again. I think they just push us to the wall. We have gone to a point where we are now saying that you have to come and settle. Otherwise, we will have to take action because the law is here for all of us and nobody is above the law. We all have to respect the law. When we ha are having a, an economic business in this country, we are doing a business in this country, whether it's individual, whether it's partnership, whether it's company, you know you are supposed to pay tax. Except if you have either duty waiver or you have SIC, then we will respect that from the authority. But as, once you didn't produce that, then you are, you are obliged to pay your taxes and on time. So as far as we are concerned, we have followed the law to the last point we can go in allowing them to operate within the country for more than one year without them paying their taxes. And now we've got to a point where we said, now you have to pay. If you don't pay, we take action. And it is not about Simlex alone. This is part of our operation. This is what we do with all the other businesses, all either in uh, companies or spare, uh, sharehold, shareholding businesses, internal partnership or individual. We will deal with you in according to the law, but where we exhaust all other procedures, we, we have no choice. We'll come up with a temporal closure, and after that, then there are other options that we do. So I think at this point in time, I want to uh, stop here and then allow a few questions to come. But as far as the Simlex, uh, tax issues concerned, this is all about. They've operated in the country for nearly two years and they are not paying their corporate tax and now we are telling them you have to pay if you cannot produce the SIC. So um, I will want to stop here. If you have questions, we, uh, we will please to answer uh, some of your questions. Which uh, newspaper you are representing, it also or helps. Media house. Yeah, or media house that you are representing. Yeah. <coughs> yes, gentlemen. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Uh, is it Mr. Ba? Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you so much for your question. I think you see, asked two questions. One, he's asking how much amount is involved. Uh, based on confidentiality between us and our taxpayers, we don't uh, quickly reveal the, that amount to the general public because there is an agreement that uh, we respect confidentiality uh, for the taxpayers' uh, details or certain information to the general public. So uh, really, if you don't mind, we want to keep that to ourselves. You know, until otherwise, the amount should not just be circulating like that. So that's because of the confidentiality of taxpayers. We deal with thousands of taxpayers, and a lot of them have some issues. But whenever we deal with them, we don't go general in public and say, so and so is owing this, so and so. So that part of it, I would ap uh, appeal that we keep that confidential uh, between us and them. Now, with the respect of the other uh, uh, social media thing that you said, well, as far as we are concerned, what we are looking forward is the SIC, 
special investment certificate that will allow them to operate without paying their corporate tax and other taxes for a period of five years. And as far as we know, they themselves are working on that. As far as we know, they have letters that they have sent to us saying that they are working on that. So if somebody else has a document that, they, that exempt them, we, we don't know that document. We don't have that document. Maybe uh, only the social media knows how, what kind of documents is that and who has the authority. And as far as we know, in this country, it's only the presidents of the country that can exempt a certain individual or certain businesses out of paying taxes. Other, th other than that, it is only a set procedure. You have to get the SIC or you have the duty waiver. So this is what we know as the tax authorities. So they may have some other documents. I don't know. I have not read it. I have not seen it. But if they have that and they, that can entitle them not to pay their corporate tax, what is wrong for them to bring it for us? We are asking them to have this SIC. If they have another document like you mentioned in your question, that, that is exempting them. Well, obviously, we've been working with them for more than one year or so. They could just tell us that, okay, this document, if it is a document that we can recognize, we'll recognize it. So I think that has answered your question. Can we have another yes, person? Yes, yes. From the point. I believe I'm um, in line with Uma. We contacted them this morning. But what they saw was, was a document that they are exempted from, from paying tax towards every, even they are paying 40% of the government. It's a contract they have to the government. So I don't know what can I can, I can still come that to this. Yes, I, I, I can still, uh, that is, if that document is something that they think that are exempt, why then are they asking for extension for the SIC? This is obvious. If you have a document, you think that document has made you not to pay, then why do you have to deal with GRA? Just submit that document to them. You can have a, a letter written by, I won't want to mention, but you can have a letter written from different corners, different people, but does that necessarily mean that document is authentic to a point that the GRA will accept that? We are established by an act of parliament, and we are entrusted by the government to take care of the tax issues in this country. Therefore, if anybody has a document that exempts you from paying tax, no matter, we have different uh, codes of taxes that you pay. If you have any document, bring it to GRA. Why would you keep it, you keep it with you and then send it to social media? Are we, well, I don't want to <laughs> say that, but you know, there's an authority here. Before you take it to social uh, media, bring it to uh, GRA. We, if it is something really, uh, an authentic document, we'll respect it. So, uh, no, you want to, can, no, you, yes, can you allow somebody else? Yeah. Yes, my name is Sam Kulajanka from West Africa Democrats Radio. And you did say that you respect the confidentiality of your yes. clients, yes. but this is a matter of national interest. Yes. The Gambian people want to know how much Simlex owes to them. Yes. That is very important. Another thing I would like also you to ask is, you said um, there could be other um, options could be explored. Yes. And Gambians are really suffering because I was there and then people are already you know, feeling the pinch because they want documents, they couldn't get it. So what is the other option here mm. for GRA and you know, Simlex? To Thank you. Um, your son, um, yes, you're talking about the amount and you want people to know. But this is just the first step. If you, if you listen carefully what we said, it's a temporal closure, which only run for three weeks. And at, you know, huh? What? 14 days, barely two weeks or three weeks or something like that. But what I'm saying is just a, sh uh, uh, this is just for a short period. After that, there are other things that we want to do. And then the total amount will be disclosed because we can go up to the option of a court case. And obviously when we get to the court, we have to tell, we have to come up with the figures. So, but at this point in time, we want to give them um, that respect and keep that, right? So that is why I don't want to disclose the amount. However, let me just be uh, uh, clear with this. The tax system we have in this country is like self-assessment. All of you doing your business in different ways, those who in the newspaper, radio stations, and other media houses, you assess yourself, you tell us how much You've worked and how much is your tax? And you submit it to us. Now, the obligation is on us. If we feel that what you have submitted is really authentic, we accept it. And we will accept it and then we move on. But even if we don't feel that what you submitted is not correct, we still accept it. And after we send our auditors, auditors. right? We send our tax auditors to go and check to see whether what you submitted is, is correct or not, right? This is what we do. So as far as um, we are concerned, you know, 
it is it is okay. We don't want to um, argue on on that subject of that subject too much. If that can if that is okay for you, yeah. He mentioned he mentioned about other people who are there. They want to get uh, ID card and now. Um, we are. I don't think this will take long time because negotiations are on. As we speak to you, I have the permanent secretary interior and his team in my office sitting down. I just told them that the journalists are here. We need to, we have high respect for you, right? We need to take care of the journalists. After that, we go and discuss. As we speak, you see the director of immigration just came in. They are all on it. And then others and others people from the same company are coming for us to sit and discuss. So it really, people have to be patient with us. This will not take a long time. And I think it will be addressed. But as far as we are concerned, this is a responsibility that we have to carry. People who need to pay their taxes need to pay it, and on time for that matter. So this, it's not about an individual. It's not about an institution. Everybody who should pay your taxes, and you, you, you are working within this country, you should pay your tax. So we are, it's a matter of principle. It is a matter of principle. Those who have to get the ID card today, well, we apologize for them not getting it, but then let them also be patient, knowing that the GRA is here, is their GRA. GRA is your GRA, GRA is our GRA. Whatever GRA collect, we send it to the government. And that is what government use for order to, to take care of the salaries, the other social developments in the country. So therefore, we cannot be complacent in doing that. Can I have another question? Mr. Landin, from Paralyzed Atlantic. Yes. Um, my question is, did GRA receive any document, like a contract agreement, between Semlex and the government, where they are exempted from paying tax? Because um, receiving, we have a document from the, an insider, an insider from Semlex, mm. and then he showed us a document, tax and customs exemptions. Yes. So I want to know whether you receive any document from the government between the agreement from the government and I, I think I've, I've answered that question earlier on, but still, since you want more clarification, let me allow my deputy to come in. Maybe he can also say that um, in more detail. Can you uh, just come in, yes, sir? Okay, thank you. Um, I think it's a very relevant question. Um, so they have a document of that nature, and uh, we are privy to that document. The background I want to bring to this is we have had a lot of contacts with this company. And we've been patient just to make sure that we do not infringe upon their rights to exist as a you know, um, a corporate legal entity. So the first time uh, we noticed that they were not filing their returns and their accounts with the office, we wrote to them. And then you know, we, 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 we organized a meeting here in the boardroom for us to clarify the issues so that we understand their status, so that we understand their standing and see what we have to recognize you know, as, as a revenue authority. So they have told us that they have this contract that they have signed with government. And there is this clause relating to you know, exemptions, that is uh, the customs and domestic taxes. When we looked at it, we, re we realized that the privileges which were pertinent at, the point, at that particular point in time was the equipment, whatever equipment they import into the country, we respect to you know, the, the production of the documents that they are supposed to you know, uh, produce. Those equipment will come with duty-free kind of you know, status. However, with regards to the domestic taxes, we, make it, we made it categorically clear. There is a process, it's, it looks like you are somewhere you know, on the journey, but you have not completed this. Yes, at the level of the sector that handles this, you can have an agreement, but to complete, for it to be completed, the president of the republic is the only person, no minister, only person who can exempt somebody for taxes. And it has to be connected to the public interest, national interest. The president must have proved that this will serve a national interest purpose, and it has to be approved. It should be subject to the approval of the National Assembly. So it's one thing to have this in a document, but one thing to have all these legal processes completed for you to enjoy the full rights of exemption. And that is what they did not complete. And we advise them, we are very helpful along the way and say, go and consult the relevant authorities to help you finalize this. I am aware of the fact that those consultations went up to the Ministry of Finance. And they were advised to go to JIPA 
they serve with the JIPA, you know, JIPA office, and they meet submissions. Those submissions were put into consideration by a committee, and the committee had disapproved that application. So we are aware of the, all this, and after all that, we wrote back to demand for the payment of the taxes they have assessed, because they have filed a return. So if you are insisting that, you know, you, you, you are not supposed to pay until you have filed a return. Now, if you file a return, it means that you have created a liability in our system, and that liability has to be paid either physically by transferring money or by providing proof of exemption. But because we have not seen sufficient proof of exemption, we wrote to them and sent a notice that by 21st of January, we will subject the office to what we call in the law a temporary closure for a period of two weeks. That was a window for them to come back and resolve all these outstanding issues. But despite the fact that the Commissioner General has issued the notice, not a single uh, contact by way of responding to our notice or coming to our offices to find an amicable you know, way of sitting and resolve the matter. None of that happened. What we feel that now that you know there is also a law that we have to administer, we have to enforce to make sure that taxes that are due are collected. Their failure to respond to our notice led to the actions of today. So which means that they have completely ignored the notice, they have completely ignored the law, and we have to collect. And let me tell you, it's not how much. Those questions came here, how much do they owe? Mm -hmm. For us, the one who owes five dollars is the same as the one who owes millions because you pay <coughs> the right amount of tax based on the law. So one who owes one million, 10 million is the same as somebody who owes five dollars as far as the law is concerned. It's about pay the fair amount of tax based on the law. So they owe tax as far as we know. So if they have provided all the reasons for us to feel that they are good in our books, we will give them a tax clearance certificate that they have satisfied the Commissioner General for the payment of tax in respect of the income tax years that we are talking about. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Jalo. The question is, after you've been working with the Sambas for almost one year, yeah. and at the same time, what I want to know here, and to be precise, is that you people have been working with Sambas for almost one year in your office. No, uh, may maybe, maybe I should answer this clearly. Well, the arrangements they made between 40% and 50%, uh, that is above us. That's not what we are here for. The percentage that is between the company and the government, even if we know that, <laughs> what can we do about that? Because that is, the, the, that is how they come to exist between us, them and the government. So that is not the area where we are talking about. We are talking about the tax that they should pay. They, that you are talking about the shares, how the distribution of that happened. We are talking about the company working, making money, they should pay tax. On that, that's what we are saying. The company, what, how the shareholding structure is, that is not our business. That really, we don't want to go into that because we all have our mandate. Our mandate here is the tax that they, they owe, that they even assess themselves. It's not us who assess, assess them. It is them who assess that. They pay. So when they pay, the government shares will come. Let me finish. The shares, the, uh, the, the mode of sharing only comes as a company after doing all your obligations, including payment of tax. So the 40% and the 60% will not be effective for a normal company until you do your tax obligations. You have to do your salaries, you have to do your dues, you have to do everything, including the tax. And then whatever is left, that is your net income, that is what you share. You want to add something? Let, sorry, let yeah. me just add something. Mm. Uh, yeah. To what you have said, look, agreement uh, 4050. What we operate is what we are talking about there is income tax. There is a law that relates to income tax. For some of you that are working <coughs> and you are paid, you know that there is tax on your employment income. It's your income that it is going after. After all that agreement is done, that government gets this, you get that. That is what, what is directly attributable to you, whatever percentage that is. That is the income now we are tracking in terms of income tax. It is the income that is directly attributable to you. So the issue of agreement in terms of 40-50 is not relevant. What is relevant is the income that is under your command as a private legal entity. Whatever is directly attributable to you. For you, my income tax for my employment income can never be shifted from me to you. In the same manner, that income that can be classified as income that is for Simlex 
they now need to prepare their accounts. Once the accounts are done, they file their returns and indicate that based on a year's activity, this is the income that we can report to be subject to tax, and this is the amount of tax we have calculated on the income. That's how it works. We are not supposed to do it for them and for no Gambian. Everybody, you do your own assessment based on your own knowledge of the activities that you did. That's why the Commissioner General said it's a self-assessment regime. GRA is not supposed to impose a liability on anybody. No. It is everybody's responsibility, whether you are an individual or a corporate body, is for you to do this assessment and come and say, this is my tax mm -hmm. and you pay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can, yeah. can we move to another person, yes, please? please? Okay, thank you. And I hope you stop to that and allow your colleagues to come in. Um, they, uh, uh, this is not the first time uh, GR is involved in this kind of operation. But all that we know that as a responsible company, Simlex will not sit down and fold their hands and wait until a week or two weeks. No. The action has happened today. This morning we went to the National Assembly to do a presentation of our financial, financial uh, statements and activity report. But, and while we were there, they are prepared to come and negotiate with us. So it's not going to take long. You may think it's going to take. No, not at all. It's not going to take long time. Even as we speak, I told you, there is a group over there, you know, that is waiting. As soon as we leave here, we are going to talk to them. So there will be a possibilities of way out. Way out is they either have to pay everything in full or they will come up with a payment plan. That's it, period. We don't have a problem. Even if they had come with a payment plan, we would have accepted it. So as we speak, they are sitting down over there. After this uh, press conference, we will go back and talk to them. If they come with options that are acceptable by GRA, why not? Tomorrow morning, people can go and get their ID card. Yeah. CG, in yeah. addition, mm -hmm. Simlex is not giving charity to any Gambian. No. They are here because of they, they feel that their investments will give them something. Yeah. That's what we have to understand. These documents, before Simlex came here, we were all getting the documents. So they are here for their own interests. So at the end of the day, those who are affected by this document, remember there are agencies that are supposed to enforce this. Under this circumstance, there will be special consideration in view of what is happening. But you know, remember GRA, as an authority has a mandate. We can only stop at where we need to stop. The law says go and collect. There are other authorities whose business is to do other things. You know, they are also working with other sectors. It's for them to work with those other sectors. But for us, we feel that we are within the ambit of the law for what we are doing. And we are here for the public interest also. Because what we are doing is to protect the revenues that the state needs to take care of other welfare needs of Gambians. So whatever we are trying to do again is for Gambians. So we don't have conflict of interest in this. Thank you, Esa. Yes. Um, um, after that, Chidi, I want to ask three follow-up questions. Um, GRA being a public entity and uh, Semlex uh, also dealing with the public, uh, why didn't you guys give a, a, a press release prior for the, for the general public to know? Because a lot of people uh, woke up there and then nothing it was shut down. And uh, you've made mention that it's temporarily uh, closed for 14 days. Does that mean it would be locked for 14 days? And as well, what would be the penalty uh, of, of that happening? Uh, maybe I should ask once, and that is the general giving a notice to the general public. We are dealing with a company. We're dealing with a company, an organized company for that matter. And you heard what my deputy said. He said notices have been given to them. Enough over the past one year to two years. We've been dealing with them, and we've been constantly saying the same thing. Put your house in order. Put your house in order, because if you not, if, if not, GRA will not spare you. So, and that's what happens. We, we, deal, we, we are dealing with them that and we have given them notice even before we come. Honestly, it would not be fair for GRA to publish that kind of a notice, you know, that we are going to close so and so business tomorrow. Yeah. We do it, and you are aware, and then you publish whatever you want to as a media house. But they, they know, they know. They, we have given them the notice in advance that we are coming. Maybe t they didn't take us seriously. But there has to be respect for authority in this country. We cannot live in a land of a, a jungle for everybody to do whatever you want. No, there has to be an order. There has to be a law and order. You know what? 
A law of a jungle means survival of the fetus. So we cannot allow. There is a law we, we have to follow. And everybody who is operating in the Gambian economy, you have to make sure that you pay your taxes on time. And if you don't, we will know and we will come for you. So that's exactly what we did. They know they should pay. Because with the paper they are talking about, which is the SIC, they've been following it for so long. So that means that they, 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 don't, they, they don't have it. So that is why they push us to the wall. Now we get to the wall. You know we cannot go anymore because the wall is there. And that is why we, 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 we do this. And you mentioned something else, uh, the last question. Yeah, um, about there be a penalty attached? No, no, you mentioned the fact yeah, that whether we close them for 14 days continuously like that. No, as I mentioned earlier, from here, the negotiations are going on. Things in the morning. The negotiations are going on between us and them and other, uh, uh, other stakeholders. So really, maybe by the end of the day, we, we'll be, it, everything will be sorted out. So it, I'm, it is not likely it's going to prolong that long up to 21 days or so. No, not at all. I am not foreseeing that because they know what is on the table. They know the issue. We know the issue. So, and uh, they are responsible. We are responsible. We'll sit down and, and then um, see how, where we can agree in terms of they, they, them paying everything in full. If there is a need for us to go into a payment agreement, which we do a lot with a lot of other institutions, we do uh, a payment agreement. You know, and once you fail on that, we come for you. But if you don't fail, we continue doing without you, continue doing your business. Any, another question? Another do you do you do it another person that without? Yes, uh, the closure is for 14 days. If Simlex doesn't comply to the the, uh, the law allow us to do the closure for uh, two weeks or 21 days, and after that we will open, but that's not stopping us there. We have other means which I don't want to disclose now. You know, I want to keep that to myself. But we have other means, you know, to 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 go after them. You know, but this is just the beginning. And we hope Simlex will learn their lessons and they will work with us. We are here to encourage businesses. We give advices to businesses free of charge. We give all kind of encouragement to businesses. For those of you who deals with what you know that we, it's not about collecting only, but we give advices and we facilitate trade in this country free of charge. You come to us, you have issue, you explain to us based on the circumstances, we try to advise you and we try to do that all the time to facilitate businesses in this country. However, we do that without compromising the principle. What you need to pay, you will pay it. If you don't pay it, we take one step. After that step, we take another one. After that, we take another one. And the final one may not be a desirable one. Any other question? The meeting to do, attend. Uh, Thank, thank you so much. I think that is very, uh, very, very clear. Yeah, Omar, once again, yes. Yeah, because I, all this is happening because they have not provided proof yes. that they have an authentic SIC. Yes. So I want to know whether there will be a drawback or continuity when they happen to produce the SIC, an authentic one, let's say tomorrow. Does that mean the tax they owed for the past two years will be exempted or they will still have to pay? Okay. Maybe this will just be a yeah. rhetorical question. Yeah. You are going to have um, a meeting with some people. Yes, stakeholders. You might agree on something. Um, yes. Would you update us? Because okay. if not, we might be, we might be beaten after a dead horse, yeah. especially us from the newspaper. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Omar. Um, it's a very simple, responsible for issuing SIC. And that committee regu sits regularly. And GRA is a member of that committee. Minister of Finance is a member of that committee. Minister of Trade, it's also, in fact, it, the Minister of Trade chairs that committee, including JIPA and other stakeholders. The SIC normally, when the, it is issued, you have to meet all the criteria that are set. If you don't meet the criteria, the, the SIC will never be given to you. So as far as, far as we, we, we know, they don't meet that, those criteria. And that is why they are not given the SIC. But if they happen to get it, 
the, it is also clearly stated, you don't, SICs are not open-ended. SICs are specific, the period, the starting period and the ending period. The date, its effective date is always stated in the letter, and then the ending period. And what and what you should, be, you should, you should have under the SIC, it's all spelled out and it's given to you. And it's there within the committee members. So as far as we know, they don't have it. But should they have it tomorrow? Well, they will just present it and we look at the effective date of the SIC. And then we respect it. We don't have a problem with that. We don't have a problem. There are so many businesses that have SIC. There are so many businesses that have duty waiver. When they come to GRA, what we do, we look at it. If it is an authentic one, we respect it, put it in the record, and then we, what we need to do with you in terms of your paperwork, we do, and we allow you. They, we, we don't have a problem. Honestly, we don't have a problem with them having SIC even tomorrow. If they have it, no problem. But as long as they don't have SIC, they have to pay their taxes. There's nobody in this country, no institution, no individual that is, will be working in this country and you don't have tax exemption and you exist. Even if you don't, if you don't come, you think you are hiding, we will get you. It's a matter of time. Because we, we have a system that is working. Either you are an importer, your, list, your names are appearing in our system, or you operate within the economy, your name is appearing in our system. We have the ASICUDA system that we use for international trade, and then we have the gum tax net that we use for the domestic. And all these things, they have list of names. Perhaps you are not an importer, that's why we didn't have Umar there. But if you had registered your business, we would have got you. Remember, you get the tin from us. And the tin number, you know, everybody, now even if you want to get a bank account, they have to ask for you for your tin. And that tin is very important because your, most of your activities are linked to that tin. So it's a matter of time that we will get you. So maybe I can just give a general advice to have the businesses or the people who are into business in the country. That is, GRA is your GRA, GRA is our GRA. It belongs to the country. We are here, we are established by an act of parliament. We are mandated to collect the revenue on behalf of the government. But we have to do it according to the law, based on the law. We follow the law, the processes, and procedures to collect the revenue. But we should all remember one thing. This country, people must respect the law. People must respect their tax obligation. Without paying or main payment of their taxes, the government revenue will not have revenue. Until maybe when we have oil, <laughs> when we have other mineral resources, and we haven't got to that level yet. So therefore, it is our obligation, all of you, including you, the journalists, to join hand with GRA to make sure that whoever needs to pay tax, you pay it. And then the government will function properly. So it's a general appeal to all of you, wherever you are. Tax collection is not, shouldn't be centered only with GRA, but it's all of us, our responsibilities. You all working in different media houses. There's a lot of taxes that you normally pay. Some of them, your PAYE, your, you know, your income tax are submitted every month. Some of you, you import, you pay your taxes. Some of you who are working, and before you even get your salaries, you know, the paymaster or the finance director will cut the income tax and send it to GRA. So why should you pay your taxes and you don't allow other people not to pay? I think it should be a fair game. Everybody should pay, you know, uh, pay your own share of the tax, and then we can have a peaceful country. Let me see. Would you would I, can, can we conclude the... Um, uh, just, uh, one thing uh, I, just one thing I uh, want to add yes. to the point, mm -hmm. sharing the document. When the burden of proof is on them, and they need to demonstrate that proof not to anybody, but to the Commissioner General. They had a notice that expired on the 24th of January. Why allowed to be cornered? You see, a, how to call it, corporate governance is very important for any investor. We want investments in this country that will create jobs and contribute towards our taxes. Those are the kind of investments we want. Otherwise, we stay with the small capital that can be mobilized in country, and we move on. So all we are saying is that, you know, they still need to demonstrate that compliance to the Commissioner General. 
and they had every opportunity to do that to avoid this kind of situation. But it's still, like he has said, the opportunity is still open for them to come and regularize what they need to regularize. We are only waiting for proof that our laws will confirm that they need to be recognized and we move on. Okay. You wanted to say something? I think we should be closing yes, now. Yes, yes, yes. yes. One last question. Mm -hmm. No special investment certificate, yeah. Um, thank you very much. I that I said the, the committee that normally sits and look at businesses that should be given uh, SIC, GRA is a member of that committee. So as you said, yes, if, if they have to be issued, we will know because we sit in that committee. If the committee, committee consists of Minister of Finance, Minister of Trade, GRA, JIPA, and other stakeholders. So definitely, we will be we will know if they are issued the, the certificate. But you know, for the benefit of others, we can just say that whenever they get the certificate, we will respect it. We have no problem. All right, thank you, thank you very much, um, DCG members of the various media houses that assemble here this afternoon. We are grateful for your coming. Uh, maybe to close, I was going to say, the GRA appreciates all taxpayers in this country, small or big. To the extent that we have a culture in-house where we organize annual taxpayer award nights to recognize compliant taxpayers. Um, the DCG mentioned that it's not the size of uh, money you owe or the rep um, taxes you owe. Dallasie is Dallasie million is million. It's the attitude towards compliance that is more important to us. If Janke is paying from her salary, or oh, what's your name? Banda is paying her fair share of her, from her salary. I am paying my fair share. And someone earning millions is not paying his or her fair share. Is that fair to the poor Gambian people? Mm -hmm. It is an NCNC, no contribution, no chop. You want mm -hmm. services, you want electricity, you are not paying for it. Others are paying. You want a good road, others are paid, you are not paying. Are you being fair to the people? Mm -hmm. So let us all, it's a collective responsibility as journalists, and that is why you are great stakeholders to GRA. Mm -hmm so that this information goes out. But should there arise a development in now against the end of the day, you, you will be communicated yes. to so that you don't misreport. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Maybe I just should